इट्स द माइंड क्राफ्ट स्टीव टीवी शो And what was it really based on in the first place? So the Odd World Quintology was really about, you know, these are these are historic control systems, and I was always fascinated with. Uh, my family had a lot of history in a lot of different ways, whether it was the Bolshevik, Bolshevik Revolution, uh, Latvian, whether it was the Native Americans, part Native American. It, like you know, people have had a lot of difficult times through Earth's history. So this was even back to the Egyptian period of how it was looked at for control systems. Where are we? Probably most of us, right? And where is like Pharaoh, right? And today that's CEO of J.P. Morgan or something, you know. And so for Oddworld, we were looking at it and we go, this was Oddworld's population control structure. And really, this was so we got the at the top you've got. Ancient financial, you know, it's kind of like the Illuminati, you know, pyramid idea that you all probably see on the web and stuff like this at different times. And Oddworld was always supposed to be this sort of dark side of globalization reflecting the real world. So whether or not the real world is this way, it's great material to mess with. You know, it's just like great fodder. And so at the top, we've got like the oldest money families in the world, and they control dollars and think tanks and globalist bankers and economic lab. All the way down, you got. The majority, and on Odd World we call that the 99.9987 percent, and uh, that that is where Abe emerged, and this is really where Abe became a big problem to the pyramid. So what happens is Abe's actions are going to start sending, like we know that oh he was a slave, he worked in a meat processing plant, and then he finds out that the the retirement plan's a lie, and he's just going to wind up chop meat and. That's not very good, but we didn't necessarily, as an audience, start thinking about the fam- financial ramifications of what happens when you shut down a big meat fa- factory, when you start having economic impact, the people that's going to shake up higher up on the pyramid. And so, as Abe is going about his journey, he starts shaking up more and more. So, in the beginning, with Rupture Farms as the takeoff place of Abe's Odyssey, Abe's biggest crime. Is he didn't just piss off his managers. He didn't just get in fights with the security guards. He didn't just get busted by the cops. He fucked over the CEO of a major corporation that has a lot of investors. There's some young people in the audience. I'm sorry. Uh, they had some ma- <laughs> some major investors, and that is not easily forgiven. And that's where the second game in the quintology that is now we're calling Soulstorm. Is taking off from these economic ripples that are just going to get worse and worse, and they're going to start feeling it, and we're going to start waking up. Like if you thought Moloch was the top of the bad guy in this world, we're going to we're going to have a big change of heart on what's going to fall on him for screwing up someone's investment, like Game of Thrones or Star Wars. You thought Darth Vader was the big guy, but you find out the Emperor is even worse, and then you find out the Emperor is kissing ass to this big giant that looks like a gray alien. Uh, at least in the last one, and eventually these ripples are getting all the way up to the top. And as that's happening, it's starting to shed cracks through the population control, economic control structure. And so, that as basically those cracks are raising up, things are getting worse. And as things are getting worse, what's happening and what's going to be happening through the epic is that Abe's stoking the fire of revolution, and that's really what this has always been about. So he's starting to stoke that fire just out of the need of he just doesn't want to end up ground meat, you know. He just doesn't want to be the next tasty treat. But that's unacceptable because of the economic ramifications that are going to happen. And what that's going to do is start bringing down the royal shitstorm upon anyone involved with Abe. So Abe's going to sort of be branded and become more like the Bin Laden of Oddworld. It's like this guy's got to go. He's screwing up. He's raising prices at your Happy Meal. Think about it. He's got to go, right? So even the consumers, even normal people, anyone above that bottom slave layer is going to start resenting Abe's impact, just like New Yorkers would resent if you raised their morning lattes two dollars a price. New Yorkers would invade any country if it meant not raising their lattes two dollars a cup. 
And then eventually the goal is take out the eye of the pyramid. That's Abe's journey, is that he finds that the only way that that lower class is ever going to have a chance is if they topple the pyramid. So in that beginning, there was two forms of currency that we saw that are being employed. Our world is primarily focused on one. It's the almighty money. And on Oddworld, we called it moolah. And with moolah, you can buy physical things. You work in the physical world, you, you manufacture for people, you service people, you do whatever you got to do to make the buck. That's how you earn the buck. And then you can buy things in the physical world with that buck. The other form was a spiritual currency. This currency was something you get from having more empathy, from helping people, from doing the right thing, from having followers that believe in you. And that would become a secondary currency that operates in the same landscape. So cold, hard physical world currency that you get through labor, uh, finding things, uh, stealing, thieving, picking pockets, whatever it takes. And then the spiritual currency, you've got to sort of be in line with the force, as Yoda would say. And we wanted to embody that into something that was becoming more a central part of our gameplay. And that's yet to really manifest in Oddworld, but Soulstorm is going to happen. And then Soulstorm was really based around a brew. A brew, another company with a happy face logo and telling you everything's wonderful and dandy and it's at a sale price today, come get some. Except it really held some deep, deep evils they were, again, going to the pyramid control structure to keep that slave class in place. Soulstorm is revealing that story in greater depth. And this was a fan art that was created, and I was like, oh, wow, that's perfect, because that's more of the embodiment of sort of what the brew really is. Now, has anyone been following our ARG at all? Okay, a few people. So the ARG is all backstory. That's, that's what we're touching on. And what I'm going to show you right now is what we call the teaser trailer to the backstory. So you got to see that first. No one's seen that yet. As you can tell, we're really lightening the mood. Yeah. It's getting back to that origin, you know? And in doing that, another thing that we were dealing with, that we were trying to create in the beginning, was these 3D databases. You know, when we started, uh, we started, launched Oddworld as a company in 1994. 3D software was still pretty crude. Toy Story, the movie, had yet to be made. And if you look, these are really all Abe, right? Like, there's Abe, and we said, well, Abe has stitches, the other doesn't, right? But we didn't have the time or the money to try and make complex 3D animated characters that all had the different personalities, so they were kind of digital clones of themselves. And those were just constraints that we lived with, trying to create a more interesting 3D, birth in 3D property. And there wasn't many at that day. You know, Mario had just sort of made the conversion. And, uh, but there wasn't like big game IP at that day that was born in 3D. And we wanted Abe to be that. But at the time, we still couldn't do hair. We couldn't do cloth very well. I mean, it was, you know, it was 20 something years ago, right? It's my hair is a, a confession too. And then, so, we, in upgrading the characters to this 21st century of tech, there's Abe from Exodus, which was basically the Abe from Odyssey. And 
it was like, how do, we, how do we take Abe and make him more mature? How do we get our textural quality, our rendering quality up into more of that industrial light and magic zone of, of qual creature quality and all that? And so this is the new Abe. But he's reminiscent of the old Abe, but hopefully even more empathetic. And as we look at the things like his ta tattoos, things that... Uh, I was just talking to Caddy, and I owe him dinner because he, if, uh, you guys are familiar with the YouTuber, Caddy? Yeah, hand for Caddy, he's been a huge supporter. Thank you, man. So he sent me pictures of the tattoo, and of course I didn't believe they were real, because I thought he just drew them on there, it was messing with me like most people do. And I said, I'll take you out to a great dinner if that's true. And then it turned out there was two, so I owe him two great dinners now, which is just like, Damn, that gets expensive. But, uh, but we, had a, we had an interesting problem because these tattoos and the symbols in the beginning of, the, of Abe's Odyssey, they were kind of simple, but really they should have had more magical qualities integrated in, into like voodoo or like uh, various mysticism practices around the world. We wanted to get that, but we didn't want to change the designs. So the designs, had to, just like Abe, had to get more complex but that complexity didn't take them away from their origin, so they just evolved, but they didn't change. And that goes to the characters too. So now, finally, we're able to, uh, because you guys supported us through New and Tasty, and we're self-financing this all ourselves, so we're not a huge entity, we just put, we're kind of crazy, we just put it all back on red. And if we do it right, we have the faith that you're gonna support us. So this is Alf before he was Abe's database with the one hat, but this is the new database. These are the 3D databases, and these are what's going in the game. This is Toby. So Toby's a new character that's on this venture. And as you can see, in some ways, they're getting even more endearing, like Toby, because the world's getting that much darker and more intense. So if you gotta have a really dark and intense world, you need even sweeter guys to, like, light on fire or something. So, uh, and that happens. Uh, and in this, we look at Moloch and where he was, and this is the Moloch from New and Tasty, which was basically the Moloch from Abe's Odyssey with slightly better texture maps, but we didn't have the budget to take him to the next level <coughs> like we're doing now. And the next level is to get them closer to what we would call a film, a film quality that's not a cartoony vibe, but it might have some uh, animated type styling. And the new Moloch is taking on another degree. So this is Moloch pulse lightning bolt hitting him in the head. And uh, I'll focus a little more on where he's going. But on all these Gluckins, the Gluckins also, they were just the same model squats and stretch. Or they were, you know, anything we could do to try and, try and uh, separate out the differences of personality. But we had to do it in really practical, efficient ways. And this time, as we go through the Gluckins, we always looked at them more like they were the cousins would be Gluckins, but they'd have different genetic traits. So as we go across the different cast of characters of Gluckins, starting with the eyes, we wanted to get much deeper into who they were. And I was telling someone, I go, yeah, this guy's incompetent. And they go, no, he's not. No, no, he's not incompetent. He was like, well, in some ways, but not in others. Yeah. So we wanted to focus more in on those personalities, deeper and richer. Mullock post-rupture farms. So now he's got the, uh, the mark of Cain, you know, across him. He's blind in one eye, and he's got a serious ax to grind. We've renamed all the Gluckins that come with the other factories, so Aslick, Dripping, and all this. These are different guys now, as so we're getting more away from what that original story was. This is focusing on the later story. And these are the databases. So Abe is shaking up this cartel of C-class entrepreneurs that come from families that basically breed managers at the C-level, CEOs, CFOs, CTOs. And they've been entrenched in their businesses, kind of like Game of Thrones, for so long, you know, this house has been in power for a thousand years in an alliance with that house. These guys have been so entrenched for so long that they live in a different reality from where the slave class lives. And they're arrogant. They're arrogant and they're prejudiced. And they would never imagine that this could happen. What's left of Rupture Farms, 
because of some damn Mudokans that are just on the bottom of the totem pole. So Moloch finds out that no one's even going to believe him what went down, so they think he just burned the place and was out for the insurance money and got caught. Right? So as he's trying to be like, you guys need to be aware there's this Mudokan uprising happening. They're like, right, right. Yeah, so what are you up to? And their incompetence and their extreme prejudice is going to start supplying the path for Abe to succeed. And these are new, this is the new Fico Depot. Is going, to, is going to be the way that he's able to succeed is their arrogances, their prejudices, their mindset of what the slave class is and how what is beginning to happen should have never happened and they don't even believe it's happening to their detriment. This is uh, Necrom. And uh, these paintings are really actually huge. Like we're doing them at like 16,000 lines of revolution, resolution. This is a Raymond Swanlin uh, painting on the left. Gluckens by uh, uh, myself and Chris at, uh, and Tom, who's bringing them all out in ZBrush and all. A few different parties in different studios around the world helping to bring these guys together. The new Soulstorm Brewery, which is like factory of ultimate enticement, feeling like a casino in Vegas on the landscape, but it's really one of the darkest, the places of one of the darkest, most manipulative origins that's going on. That is really the mystery of Soulstorm to be solved in the game. Now, the other thing we don't realize we're shaking up yet in the property is the, the, the societies, the organizations, the foundations, the temples, the orders that these prevailing financial powers have nurtured themselves into over the years. So this is like the, the stock luxes. There's a class of people that run the slaughter yards, breeding of meat and distributing of that. And it's like a deep order, you know, not, not that unfamiliar with like the Masons or, or the Templars or different groups that have entrenched in business over the years. And so we spent a lot of time on the, on the, uh, the medallions and the awards of these, this class and their groups. <clears throat> this is the, those that operate the trains on time. We call it the Iron Kronos Guild and Temple. The diggers, those that are robbing the bones, those that mine bones for different pharmaceutical products, for different consumer products, for different reasons. The Society of Alchemaic Sciences, which gets into who's designing the brew and what is it really, and how deep does that go? And now, as we get into, how deep am I? What time am I? I'm 27 minutes in? Okay. We wanted to do a much longer uh, question and answer this year, because last time we were here, everyone wanted it longer. So I'm trying to get to the end. Now. I'm not able to show you uh, game footage today because we're, we're in process of securing some larger pro partnerships to get us physical distribution again. Uh, and there's announcements that want to be made with that and we've been asked to hold back on those types of materials until those deals are done. But I tried to do the next best thing, which is show you the problems that we started to have to solve based on followers and followers is what Abe's really about and if we go to who Abe is as a game we go it's really about followers and thinking puzzles right like if you, if you were to deduce down you go what is Abe you go yeah it's it's think it's it's kind of smart puzzles that you have to solve but you solve them through action and it's all about rescuing guys but what we want to do is the more followers the you have the more power you have the more spiritual power you have so what I'm going to show you here is this is just the UI. And the game screen behind it is black. Okay, sorry. But the UI will hint at more of what we had to deal with in managing all this. And so here, I'm going to start to play. And what you'll see is down the bottom, we have a system that had to, Abe's health, his inventory, his chi status. And as he collects followers, these followers are becoming much more difficult to manage. And the reason is, sorry about that. The reason is, is that in the previous games, even new and tasty, 
the Mudokans, they couldn't even jump over a gap, right? Let alone hoist up or follow you through a traverse of conditions. So they were very limited capacity beasts of burden. And while they helped your high score, they didn't help you. They weren't like allies that could fight for you, that could be used like tower defense and placed in different places and do things and be set uh, to different aggressive modes where you can arm them and where you can manage a lot of them. And all that is happening now in, Soul, in Soulstorm. But what that meant was it becomes a more dynamic uh, environment where sometimes your Mundakins are not all on screen because you, you've put them to work doing other things, right? So how do you manage that? How do we manage that on a VU level? So this is where we had to create the icon system. Of the muds following you. So this is as you hello and all you, and you start gathering larger groups. Oops. And you start gathering larger groups of them Two things are happening. The accumulation of the meter, you can tell how many are following you. You can tell if they're being put to work or being damaged or whatever. But as you increase more followers, you see that glow? That's your chi. So your spiritual power is increasing, which means the things you can buy with that currency are opening up and increasing. And now you can start to tell, even if they're immediately in your vicinity or not, if they're taking damage, they're flashing red. If they turn red, they're flashing. Uh, if they get killed, Ah, sorry about that. I have problems pausing this at the right spot, sorry. So as they, as they start flashing, oops. So it's basically giving you more ways to monitor what's happening with these guys that are much more dynamic and much more than just beasts of burden, but becoming active allies on the screen with you at the same time in mass quantity. Now, as that's happening, in a world of flammable brew, if you saw the early releases we did on, New and Taste, on Soulstorm, we said we're gonna get more dynamic, we're gonna get more highly volatile, it's gonna be slightly darker, and uh, it's gonna be a lot more intense. So let's just say brew, one of the side effects of brew is that it's highly flammable, and everyone's addicted to it. So the combination makes for some extremely dangerous and. Uh, gameplay that starts unfolding, which means in the old world of Abe, he had to have a, he now has to have a much more robust inventory, which in the past he didn't have. It was like one for one, you got a rock to throw at a bag of meat to get the meat so you could deal with paramites or slogs. It was one to one, but we needed a much more complex system if we're dealing with, well, if a guy catches fire because I use brew, but I don't want him to die, how do I put him out? And that led to needing to have many more pickup items. Now, if you just saw, that's Abe collecting items in the world, which led to, oh, sorry about this. How do I build a game if I can't even run a video? Okay. So in that landscape where you need a lot more managing, that meant we needed a lot more abilities to manage. And that meant we had to create an inventory system. And now Abe has a robust inventory system that uh, is largely like consumer products that he can get. And those consumer products, he can start converting into weapons. And he can have, then start finding with collectibles, crafting those weapons into more specialized things. So inventory system and crafting has become a key part of what Abe does to get all these Mudakins through the world safely, hopefully, uh, and in this game, you're trying not to ideally kill the sligs either. So a perfect play, nobody dies. That's hard as hell, you know? It's, uh, there's a lot of PTSD trauma that's gonna take place before you achieve that goal. But that's our goal, is that in the ideal world, it would have been able to traverse this very dangerous landscape and do that without killing anybody. Not even sligs. And now, where this game picks up is where New and Tasty left off. And where New and Tasty left off 
was with 301 freed Mudokans. So this game begins with 301 freed Mudokans that you're going to try and take with you through the journey because they don't just disappear into the ether, they're going to stay with you. And at times, in real time, in play, you'll be managing the survival of this many guys on screen at one time. Now unfortunately, like I said, I'm not showing game screens, I'm not showing game play, but I just gave a big indication of how this is a very different game, but it builds on what we believe was at the heart of what made uh, Abe special, and it reignites our part two of the five in the Quintology. So that's what we're showing today, and we're opening it up to Q&A for the rest. And if And if anyone has any questions, please, there's a mic on the floor. And just hop up to the mic right there on the floor. And you can get in line if you've got a question. And we'll do our best to answer everything. Hi there. First, I just want to say thanks, because through Ardwell, I met my best friend. And we were able to support each other through really tough times. But secondly, uh, would you ever consider making a second art book? Uh, we're, we're trying to. Hooray! Yeah, yeah, we're trying to. Thank you. You're welcome. And hopefully it'll be even better. Oh. But hopefully. Yes. Hello. Oh you may uh, have seen me before. You um, look familiar. Um, Lorna Ganaccio? I'm sorry. Lorna. Lorna. Facebook. Oh, Facebook, how are you doing? Not bad. <laughs> All right. Along. I'll sign it if you want. Yes, please. Okay, I will. I'm trying to get my friend up here who's talented at art. <laughs> yeah, shaking as it is. Yeah. All right, never mind. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. Do you have a question? Um, yes. Um, yeah. Two, very briefly. Will you make another one of these one day? Uh, yeah. We've been trying to. Um, we've been trying to republish more because if you looked on like Amazon or eBay, it's it's crazy how expensive they are. Well, I, I saw one. Like the leatherback one, it was like 500 pounds. Yeah, yeah, the, it gets a lot worse too. I got this on my graduation. Yeah, 2010. So, so we're trying to reprint that, but that was ballistic publishing. Yeah. And so um, we hope to, but we want to bring a whole new book as well. Yeah, and this is probably unlikely, but would um, Slick Storm or Hand of Odd ever come into it's the future? Too it's too hard to say because the fact is we support ourselves today. We pay for our own project. I mean, we're really going for broke on this. Uh -huh. um, and uh, so what we've learned is that anything we say and we don't do, people want to kill you. Oh. Right? I've gotten plenty <laughs> of death threats and shit like that over the years. Well, for that. the game looks intimidating enough as it is. I am going to shake <laughs> if I have to manage all those fellas. Well, I, hopefully it's enjoyable. Enjoyable. You know, it leaves you, might leave you traumatized, but... Well, it's dark <laughs> with a capital D. Yeah, but that's what you guys were asking yeah. for. So it's not just our fault. You know, okay. It's you're, yeah, you're held responsible, too. Well, they're shooing me away just now, <laughs> okay. so I better go. It was uh, nice to see you, Lord. Nice to see you as well in person, and I'm sorry for waffling. That's okay. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. You. Hello there, my name's hey. Matt, and I just want to say it's, it's wonderful to be able to speak to you. I just want to thank you for 20 years of quality games that have remained, you know, kept the original IP, and that's an achievement alone. Well, thank so, you. Uh, I've got a, a law question, which goes back to the original Odyssey, and I, I don't know if I'm creating this memory in my head, but I remember reading uh, an interview of yourself. Before you leave Rupture Farms, there's a sign that says, if you leave, all the Madokans will die. And uh, I, I believe the original, uh, Abe, despite seeing that, he leaves anyway, he's scared, he runs. Yeah. And he has to deal with the guilt, and he doesn't know how to chant. Yeah. It's not till he meets Big Face that he teaches him, and to soothe his conscience, he goes back to save the rest. And I just wonder, it does, because obviously that doesn't show in the game. But you new can, and tasty, can, we let you save them all. You can, yes. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah. But you can. But yeah. Was originally, you know, he does, he does leave of that original guilt, or does he, is he able to chant from the beginning? Uh, I've always wondered. 
Well, he was able to chant in the beginning of Abe's Odyssey, right? Yeah. You just weren't taught it yet. Yeah. So we wanted to build in things where capability was there for the second playthrough, mm -hmm. you know? And I think on this one, we've taken that to a, a whole nother level, quite frankly, of replayability and options available to the... That's it. So while puzzles were, will exist, uh, because that's kind of at the heart of Abe, uh, the, your agency to deal with those pu puzzles becomes really wide in how you choose to do it, like really wide. New and Tasty opened up more ways to solve every puzzle, but this takes it into a whole other kingdom of, of that possibility. And uh, the guilt of Abe and all that, it was always a difficult thing to measure because we never really had the time and budget to figure out what, if, if he did this, how would it change the narrative story? Yeah. So we had to try and find a way to tell a primary story that had kind of different endings, you know? Um, and so it was hard to tell exactly what, what, what should happen if everyone saved them or what should happen if people didn't. And sometimes that was a little more convoluted, you know? Yeah. But definitely the uh, PTSD sat with him hard, you know? Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, because I, I know it's not till you get to, I never had to say it, Monsiac? Monsiac. Monsiac yeah. lines. That's the first time I actually tells you to chant. Hold, I, was, I remember playing yeah. thinking, that's odd. But yeah. <laughs> think about it like that, it uh, makes sense. Yeah. yeah, so that's what happened. And then this time, this is, that's where the story begins. Yeah. Oh, excellent. Yeah. yeah. Right. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Thanks for coming. Uh, all the best. All right. Hi there. How are you doing? Uh, my name is Will, and just before I continue, uh, out of the 20 years of Oddworld, I've been able to experience 15 years of this, and it's been absolutely amazing to have all the games. Uh, my big question is to do with more like the challenges that you face between uh, Soulstorm and practically any other game like Stranger's Wrath or, uh, or the original Oddworld. Has it been probably one of the biggest challenges, would you say, to try and articulate this sort of story? And obviously having to save the 301 Mudokans at the moment and you have to manage them all. Would you say it's been really challenging to kind of convey that into the game? To oh, totally, to, yeah. totally. Uh, but we had to do it in a way where it, so it sounds like, how does that happen? It'll make more sense in context mm -hmm. to be like, how does that happen? You know, it'll be like, oh, that's how that happens. So it'll be a little more enlightening. Um, but it, it, it's always been a tricky thing. And the, the challenges that we had now, one of the things that we were able to do differently on this one was we approached it in a more agile, you all know what agile, you know, in terms of software production, in a slightly more agile way, which is we said, let's, let's focus, focus first on what we can get to work and then figure out how many CPU cycles we have left and then how much we can add on to that. And in the beginning, we predicted it would get about here of capabilities. It wound up about here because of the way we were approaching it, which was kind of insane. It's, it's, um, I'm not here to hype the game, I'm, I'm really not. You know, if, if uh, we usually, people usually get in trouble when they do that, I'm no exception. Um, but I'm just really being honest, right? So it, it wound up here, and it was only because we didn't pre-plot every, we didn't figure out, this is every feature of the game we wanna make. We said, if we can get Brew to work well, how well does that work? And then, what do we learn when we play that as an experience? Okay, now what does that mean it else it should do? And what that did was it created this domino effect of new features and capabilities that along the way we just kept on checking the robustness of the code, the performance against various hardware platforms, and we, get, and we just, you know, Benny, the executive producer, myself, He's sort of taken Sherry's role, who's more, Sherry McKenna, my founding partner, who's more semi-retired now. And uh, Benny and I every day are plotting what, how far can we take it? So our discovery process of new features and abilities in the game really lasted about 18 months. Just that discovery process. And that meant polishing out the art and, and taking those things to new, you know, all, all, the, all the art and stuff too. But uh, and it's physically based rendering now. You know, all that is getting, getting tighter. But um, in general, yeah, lot, lots of new stuff. And none of it we could have foreseen because it was a lot of happy surprises because of the way we were approaching it. And historically, we didn't approach it that way. We approached a big plan and then we tried to execute. And it's really not the best way to develop and find the best things you can do with software. So I think we're out of time. Thank you, everyone. Really appreciate you coming. Hope it was worth your while. Lord Halavik, everybody. Thank you. Well, thanks for coming, and please join us again at 1 o'clock for Julian Gollop talking about Phoenix Point. Thank you.